What is up guys? We are back with another video and today we're checking out this motherboard right here. This is the Asus ROG Maximus Z690 Hero. This is actually our first Z690 motherboard that we're taking a look at, so we're pretty excited about that. And on top of that, this is the Maximus Hero, which is basically like the entry level into the Maximus line from Asus. So let's go ahead and take a look. So to start things off, let's talk about accessories. Of course, we know ROG Maximus boards come with a ton of accessories. And the one that I wanted to talk about is the Hyper M.2 card. So this is a full-size expansion card um, that of course you would plug into one of the PCI Express slots. And it actually has two M.2 slots on it. The first slot is actually a PCI Express 5.0 M.2 slot. And the second slot is a Gen 4 slot. As we take a first look at the board, we have a very solid look with a black PCB with black and silver accents. For those wondering, this is a normal ATX sized motherboard. Starting at the CPU socket, we have Intel's LGA 1700 socket. And of course, this is the brand new socket that you're gonna find on all Z690 motherboards. Now, if you are running an older system, um, a lot of the you know, cooler makers, they actually made upgrade kits, so you necessarily wouldn't have to get a brand new cooler to run on this motherboard. Surrounding the CPU socket, we have our power delivery components. Asus is using a 20 plus one teamed power stage design, so you have a 10 phase VRM with power stages that run in parallel for each phase. These power stages support 90 amps each, we also have microfine alloy chokes and 10K black metallic capacitors. Covering the power delivery components are two large heat sinks which are connected by a heat pipe and the rear I.O. cover sort of brings the top corner of the board together nicely. The I.O. cover does have a sort of mirror-like finish on it, but it's gonna light up with RGB lighting which we'll show you here in just a little bit. At the top corner of the board, you'll find two eight pin EPS connectors, which are metal reinforced. As we move over the top edge of the board, we'll find four four pin fan headers, as well as a postcode display. The headers are as follows. You have CPU fan, optional CPU fan, AIO pump, and channel fan. The channel fan headers on this board do support ASUS Hydronode. There are four DDR5 DIMM slots on this board, which support up to 128 gigabytes of DDR5 6400 memory. These slots do not have locks on the bottom, which makes it easier to swap out your memory once you have your graphics card installed. Right next to the memory slots, we have ASUS's new PCIe slot Q release button. This is actually a physical button that when pressed unlocks the first PCI Express slot's security latch. Along the edge of the board, you'll find a three pin addressable RGB header, retry button, start button, flex key button, 24 pin ATX power connection, a six pin PCI Express power connection for the Thunderbolt four ports, a USB 3.2 gen two by two header, USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, six SATA 6 gig ports, and then a second USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. The SATA ports and USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers are at a 90 degree angle so they don't interfere with your graphics cards. Along the bottom of the board, you'll find the rest of your headers and connections. From left to right, you have your HD audio headers, a four pin standard RGB header, two three pin addressable RGB headers, three four pin fan headers, two USB 2.0 headers, temperature sensor header, water pump header, two water temperature headers, water flow header, and your front panel headers. Like most motherboards these days, the bottom of this board is covered by heat sinks. There are three main heat sinks, two for the two M.2 slots, and then one that covers the PCH. There's a small hero logo and a larger ROG logo on the PCH heat sink. As far as expansion slots go on the board, you have two PCI Express 5.0 X16 slots, which are X16 and X8 electrical, and a single PCI Express 4.0 X16 slot, which is X4 electrical. The top two slots are metal reinforced while the bottom one is not. 
Removing the top and bottom heat sinks reveal our M.2 slots. The first and third slots, the ones with the blue thermal tape, are PCI Express 4.0 X4, while the second slot is only PCI Express 3.0 X4. All of these slots feature ASUS's Q-latch, which makes installing and removing M.2 drives toolless and a breeze. Coming over to the rear I.O., we have an integrated I.O. shield that is all black. As far as buttons and connections go, from left to right, we have a clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, HDMI, two USB 2.0 ports, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, 2.5 gig LAN, seven USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, six are type A and one is type C, your Wi-Fi antenna connections and your audio connections. When it comes to RGB lighting, I think ASUS has definitely toned things down with this board. The only thing that lights up is the rear IO cover and ASUS is calling this their Polymo lighting. Basically it switches between saying ROG and Hero with the ROG logo. You can cycle through different effects that kind of backlight these different sayings, but I think it's a big missed opportunity in considering how big this lighting area is. When it's all said and done, I think ASUS has a really great board here. You know, when it comes to the Z690 chipset or the Z690 ecosystem, there are a lot of features that you want, and I think ASUS delivers on pretty much all of those features with this motherboard. Now, of course, the big one when it comes to Alder Lake is your power delivery. You do have that 20 plus one power phase design. We didn't run into any issues running our i9 12900K over clocking no issues either so no issues on power delivery vrm temperatures everything like that as you can see we do have those two very beefy heat sinks so no issues when it came to anything like that and one thing i really like about asus motherboards is if you go into the bios there's so many fine-tuned overclocking settings so if you really want to get into crazy overclocking you can go ahead and do that in the bios and if you're not really you know, into overclocking or you're not sure what to do, this motherboard has their AI overclocking feature, which actually worked pretty well in our testing too. Um, you know, you get things like you have Thunderbolt 4, you have USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. Um, we have Wi-Fi 6E and 2.5 gig LAN. I think at a board in this kind of price level and this kind of segment, it would have been nice to see, you know, 10 gig LAN on this board, or at least dual NICs on this. Um, I think most boards these days are becoming standard with 2.5 gig LAN, so having something a little bit better than that, or at least a second ethernet port would have been good on this board. The RGB lighting, as I said, was pretty toned down on this. I think Asus kind of missed the mark on this board. Being a Maximus board, you want a little bit more RGB lighting, um, and the Polymo lighting is just kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, one of the other things I really like about this board is the release button here for the per first PCI Express slot. Um, that is just awesome because a lot of times these M.2 heat sinks really get in the way and having that, you know, button to release your graphics card just saves you so much trouble of either trying to get a little screwdriver down in there to press the release button or having to remove an M.2 heat sink. So I like that. Of course, we have DDR5 support and um, we have PCI Express 5.0 M.2 uh, support with the external card. Now the external card is nice. I like that Asus sort of has, you know, future-proofed this board with that external card because a lot of these Z690 motherboards aren't gonna come with Gen 5 NVMe uh, slots. So it's nice to have that, um, but it's a little weird um, because Technically, that card should support two Gen 5 slots, but only has one on it. And if you wanna run both slots, you have to like go into the BIOS and it's a little hard to find. Um, but it is nice that kind of out of the box, this board does support um, up to four M.2 drives. So you have all of that. Um, and then you of course have the ASUS features like the ASUS Hydro node um, on some of the fan headers. You have your water pump headers. You have all that kind of stuff on this board. And of course, as I said, the AI overclocking. Now with Alder Lake, it is going to be a little bit more expensive. And with 
you know, chip shortage and all that kind of stuff, prices are all over the place. But I would expect to probably spend between 650 and 700 for that board, which is a lot. But if you are investing in an Alder Lake system, this is gonna be a board that's gonna last you a very long time. And like I said, with a lot of the stuff, it's gonna be very future-proof as well. So if you have any questions about this board, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.